Welcome to ECLIMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed domain theory and how to use domain theory to distinguish between magnets, magnetic materials, and non magnetic materials. We discussed that for magnets, the dipoles in each domain are facing in a common direction and all dipoles in all domains are facing in a common axis. Then when we discussed magnetic materials, we said if a material has like five domains, the dipoles in one domain are facing in a common direction, but that direction is different from the second domain to the third domain and the fourth domain. But those dipoles are flexible and they can be moved easily by external fields. And then we discussed non-magnetic material and we said they lack magnetic domains and if they have magnetic domains, then the external field does not have any effect to those dipoles in those domains. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss magnetization and when we talk about magnetization, we are going to discuss the process of making or changing magnetic materials to become magnets. Changing magnetic materials to become magnets here simply means you are changing the direction of the dipoles to face in a common direction in all the domains. So we are going to start with the electrical method and here you need the idea of direct current that we discussed in simple cells and circuits. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define magnetization and then list at least four methods of magnetization and then finally discuss how to use electrical method and in this case direct current to magnetize a material. To magnetize a material here, we are going to change the direction of dipoles in magnetic materials which are facing in different direction in each domain to face in a common direction. I want you to be very keen on that and remember that always whenever we mention the word magnetization. So magnetization process is the process of transforming magnetic materials into magnets by aligning the dipoles in them. Remember when you have a magnetic material which is not magnetized, if it has three domains like that, then the dipoles inside will be facing in a common direction in, dipole, in domain one, but which is different from the direction in domain two and which is totally different from the direction in domain three that is for a magnetic material now when you magnetize this material partially if you want to magnetize it partially by bringing a magnetic field then this material now will change and look like this the domains inside this uh, the dipoles inside these domains we have three domains then the dipoles now, in this case, they will change orientation like that. They will be almost facing in a common axis like that. So orientation will change partially like that. This is when you, are, uh, you have magnetized it partially, number two. But now if you increase the strength of the magnetic field or the external field, then finally, these dipoles inside these domains will face in a completely common direction like this and in this case we will say the magnet or the material has attained what we call magnetic saturation so this is diagram three in diagram three all the dipoles are facing perfectly in a uniform or in a common direction and we call that one magnetic saturation so the first diagram is for an magnetized material, an magnetized magnetic material. The second one is partially, partially magnetized material. Then the third one is completely, completely magnetized material. And a material which is magnetized completely, we call it, it has attained magnetic saturation. So we have four main methods of magnetizing materials or of making the dipoles inside a magnetic material to align in a common direction. The first one is induction. We are going to discuss it. 
The second one is stroking. We have double stroke and single stroke method. We're going to discuss that. Then we have hammering. We're going to use a hammer to magnetize a material in a north-south direction. Then the fourth one is electrical method. And in this case, we use direct current. And in this lesson, we are going to consider this electrical method. So we are going to begin with the electrical method as the first method of magnetizing materials. And here we are going to use a type of current which we call direct current or the DC. Remember, we have two types of current, direct current and alternating current. Alternating current in cells and simple circuit, we said it moves in different direction. And if it moves in different direction here, it's going to make the orientation of these dipoles to face in all directions. In that case, it will not help us. So we are going to use direct current, which is moving only in one direction. So when it moves in one direction, it's going to help us to orient the dipoles in a common direction. So here what you need, you need an, a solenoid. A solenoid is a coil of many turns, like you can see on the, on the screen as the first diagram of insulated copper wire. So a solenoid is a coil of many turns of insulated copper wire. And then the material that you want to magnetize, you will insert it inside that solenoid. Then you connect to a DC source. So you will connect this or you will insert this nail, like in this case, inside that solenoid. Then this current is going to flow from the uh, positive terminal to the negative terminal. So in this solenoid, it will be flowing in a specific pattern. Then we, will, uh, we are going to determine how we can use that pattern of flow inside the solenoid to determine the North Pole and the South Pole. So once you have inserted your material inside the solenoid, then you switch the switch on and then you wait for the direct current to flow for a specific duration. We are not going to allow this current to flow forever. It's only going to flow for a specific duration because if it flows excess, the dipoles will orient and then the excess electrical energy is going to convert it to heat. And when heat is being produced, then it's going to disorient again the dipole. So we are only going to allow it to flow for a specific duration. So the polarities of the resulting magnet will depend on the direction of current inside this solenoid, which is holding the material which we want to magnetize. And we have two ways in which we can identify the position of the North Pole and the South Pole. And the first one is called framing his right hand grip rule for a solenoid carrying current. And then the second one is called the crock rule. So we are going to begin with framing his right hand grip rule for a solenoid carrying current, which states that if a solenoid carrying current is grasped with the right hand, with the fingers pointing in the direction of current, then the thumb will point to the North Pole. So as you can see on this screen, this hand is holding this solenoid, which is carrying current. And in the fingers are pointing in the direction in which this current is flowing in the solenoid. Then automatically this thumb is pointing to the North Pole. So this side is North Pole. Then the other one is South Pole. We also have another rule which we can use to confirm that. And it's called the clock rule. The clock rule states that if on viewing one end of a bar, the current flows in clockwise direction, then that one will be South Pole. If it flows in a clockwise direction, then that one will be North Pole. So I want us to consider the side which is South Pole according to Fleming's right hand grip rule. I want us to consider the last loop, this one here. Here, current is flowing upwards. Then at the back of this material, is flowing downwards. Now, what direction is this? This one is clockwise. So this one is south pole because it's moving up then down. That is clockwise direction. And according to the clock rule, if it's moving in a clockwise direction, that one is south pole. Then I want us to consider the last loop in this uh, solenoid uh, where we have the north pole here. Then here, current is moving up in front and then it's moving down at the back what direction is this one this is anti-clockwise then that is the north pole of this material 
So as you can see here also, you can use this idea like this. In this case here, for this one to be North Pole, then current is moving down, then it's moving up on the other side. So in this case, it's moving and clockwise direction, that is North Pole. Then on the other side, at the back is moving down, then here it's moving up, and that one is a South Pole because it's moving in a clockwise direction. So let's attempt to two questions here. The first question is, complete the diagram below and identify the polarities of A and B. Now, when they are telling you to complete the diagram here, they have not shown us the direction of current. Remember what we discussed in Form 1, the last topic, cells and simple circuit? We said the current originated from the positive terminal through the wire to the negative terminal. So here, the positive terminal is here. So current is going to flow through this wire like that. Then like that, in front here, it will move up. In the back, it will move down here, up, up, up like that. Then it will move down behind and then it will flow down like that. So here you have completed the diagram. Then now what is the direction of current? I want you to grasp this solenoid with your right hand. Then where is your fingers pointing up? And then where is your thumb pointing? If the fingers point up in the front part, then your thumb will point in this direction. And where the thumb points, that is North Pole. And then the other side will be South Pole. And then if we consider the crock rule, I want us to consider this one here. This one is easy, we can do that. In the front here, this current is moving up. Then in the back, it's moving down. What direction is this one here? This is anticlockwise, moving up and then down on the other side, this is anticlockwise, and anticlockwise is North Pole. Then on the other side, the last loop, current is moving up, then it's moving down on the other side. In this case, this is clockwise, and that one is South Pole. So in this case, you have answered that question fully, and you will have your three marks. So the second question here, complete the diagram below, so that point A acquires North Pole. So this point, they want is to acquire North Pole, and then point B acquire South Pole. So for you to do that, then you need the two rules, the right hand grip rule, and the clock rule. Since we don't have a loop on this diagram, that's what we are tasked to do. Then the only rule which we can use now is the crock rule. And in the crock rule, we must first determine the direction of current on this wire. Current originates from, not, from the positive terminal, the negative terminal. So current here will be flowing up and then it should be flowing down like that. So in this case, in the first case here where current is flowing up, where we have the South Pole, then we must draw a loop in such a way that it, the current will be flowing in a clockwise direction for it to make South Pole because the clock rule says if the current is flowing in a clockwise direction, then that is South Pole. So in this case, for this one to move South Pole, then current must be moving up on the upper side then down on the back side. So here, current will be moving up like that. Then at the back, it will be moving down. So that now in this case, current is moving up. Then now to complete this one, then on the side of North Pole, we must form a loop in such a way that the current is moving in a clockwise direction. In this case, it means current must be moving up on the uh, on the upper side then down on the back side so in this case also we must have current which is flowing in the back it's flowing down then the loop which will connect this one should be moving up here like that then in now in this case you complete your diagram then here it will be like that like that then it should be like that, then current moving up, then here also it should be like that, then here also it will be like that, then here like that, then it will complete like that. Then now you will complete with the arrows like that, then it means here current is moving up, down in the back, up in front, down like that, 
until the last point here where it will move up and then down in the back side then in this case it will be here it will be and clockwise direction that will be north pole here it will be clockwise direction that is south pole and now if you apply your fleming is right hand grip rule for current carrying solenoid then it will be the fingers will be moving up and then this side where we have point a will be our north pole so it's very important to note that allowing current to flow for a long time does not increase the extent of magnetic saturation because once magnetic saturation is reached excess current will cause the heating effect on the solenoid and that one will increase the temperature of the material you are magnetizing and the particles of that material will start vibrating more vigorously that might lead to disorientation of the dipoles hence demagnetizing the material again another important thing to note is that if you understand better the right hand grip rule and the crock rule then it will be very easy for you to identify the position of the north pole and south pole whenever you are magnetizing a material using electric current that is direct current so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss stroking method as a method of magnetizing materials.